Thank you. Our first piece is Jefferson County Overture, which was commissioned for a middle school in Jefferson County, Kentucky, back in, try to read Roman numerals, 76. <laughs> Jefferson County Overture. Gustav Holst, who's actually British, believe it or not, in a name like that, very, very well known for writing really serious high-end music, orchestra-level music, for brass bands. Uh, this is a section of one of the suites he wrote for the military band, uh, 
one I like a lot because I play it every summer with a professional band I play in the summer. And uh, this is one that's been brought down to middle school level. And uh, not only did they do a nice job with it, they actually like it, which always pleases me because I'm trying to bring stuff to them that, uh, that they'll enjoy playing. So this is a uh, long title. March from the first suite for military band by Gustav Holst. Thank you. 
concert march uh, where we pay homage to anyone who is serving or has served, and especially to our namesake, Corporal Thorne. And uh, like I said, all those who did serve. So, call to duty. Thank you. 
I knew when I saw this child in my band that he, she had a special talent. Nicole Sanders. <laughs> What was interesting was there were like a dozen and a half kids who wanted to scream. <laughs> and the park testing sort of blew my scheduling for auditioning them out. So we drove the chorus teacher crazy for a couple of days doing a scream off. <laughs> you scream, you scream, you scream. It was interesting. Of course, years ago I had the principal walk in wonder what was going on. <laughs> but uh, okay, fun piece. Uh, we're going to close this section with uh, another March-like piece called Pride and Purpose. And if you've been around the world long enough, you know why I chose that one.
like adjustment. It doesn't matter how many times you adjust it. Once you put people in here, it all changes. Because uh, the acoustics in here are sort of like screaming into a steel garbage can. Uh, <laughs> but uh, our next piece is flat tire shuffle. Some of the jazz pieces, I just don't know why they come up with the titles they do. So I got nothing. Flat tire shuffle. I forgot something though. It is the zone. Alto, uh, sax solo. Will we do it? Trumpet solo. Amy did join us.
breathe. Our next piece is a little more even feeling uh, jazz piece called 160 Blue. Yeah, I <laughs> 
Indiana Bowers. Okay, uh, last item before we move on. A little warning for the uh, 
for the audience. There's a couple of places in the music, I'm not going to tell you which pieces, but you're going to think it's appropriate to applaud because it's over, and it isn't. So the kids are supposed to keep their instruments up until I drop my hands. That would be your clue to uh, because you sort of really lose the effect. So I just wanted to warn you about it. Uh, now we're going to get started. Uh, Johannes Brahms, one of the great uh, composers of piano and orchestral music, and we have a version of his academic festival overture setting in band uh, at the middle school level. So we are, uh, as soon as my band stops talking, I can hear you over me. Okay, I think they're reading me. Academic festival overture.
as the title implies, it is not like most music. The most common time we play is 4-4. Four, four. In the last piece, you heard the three most common times you're going to hear music, generally speaking, in the West. 4-4, four, 2-4, four, four, and 3-4. This one's in 5-4.
I warned you. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, it's a huge ending. And, uh, a lot of people out there think that kids at this level, unless they're, like, all shore band quality, you know, they think they can't do gentle and finesse and dynamics. And these guys can't. Anybody out there familiar with the Broadway musical Hamilton? Yeah. I know one song. This one. And uh, Ava Julia is going to do the vocal for my shot. Hi guys.
because the composer is not somebody who generally is known for composing music in our genre because he was busy doing for a living what I do. He retired a couple years ago and he has been uh, starting to do some writing and this one's actually in Alfred Publishing to, uh, to be published. And uh, we're going to be taking this to competition. Uh, but what really makes it special to me is Paul Caliando and I went to college together and he's a very good, very old friend. And, uh, and he's here. <laughs> so do it right. <laughs> okay. Aside from from my connection to the composer and the title to me and a connection to the school, it also does something else I like. It goes from four four, which we're all used to, to. 5-4, one of my favorite pod meters. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It is the kind of piece that we do look at to take the competition, and it is indeed going with us this year. So uh, I hope you enjoy it of pride and power.
frequently, when music's written, there's a dynamic level set for the band. And what I really like about what Paul did was there are places where there are several different levels of volume so that the balance works right in the band. And uh, it is just really very different and certainly better than anything I ever wrote in college. But uh, mine was always correct. No, and I didn't want to listen to it, so that's okay. We all have different gifts. Our next piece is uh, another piece we're going to be taking to competition. It is called Kingdom of the Sun and Moon. And uh, Robert Buckley, the composer, says, inspired by an ex exhibition of historic Peruvian art, Kingdom of the Sun and Moon takes us on a mythical journey reflecting the ancient Inca Empire. This imaginary movie score develops using modal melodies, exotic percussion, and dramatic orchestration. In cinematic style, this work opens with a spectacular panoramic picture of the great Inca city of Machu Picchu, perched high in the mountains and ends up with a colorful procession proceeding toward the Temple of the Sun. And you can almost see, in the music, you can see this ancient people going to the temple of the gods they are scared to death of. <laughs> and, uh, and all the reverence that they give their gods. And uh, just really, really neat piece of work. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do.
uh, this evening with a piece of music that I did not find. Actually brought to me at the end of last school year by then sixth grader uh, Cameron Siani in our tenor sax section. Wave, Cameron. Just say hello, Cameron. I encourage them to go to J.W. Pepper, our music supplier, and listen to pieces and see if they find something interesting. And every once in a while, they come to something, come find something, and they come to me with it, and I'll listen to it. And if I can think we can handle it, I'll pull it in. It's actually a level higher than we tend to play, but uh, they really like the sound of it, so I ordered it, and they definitely pulled it together, which is why it's the closer. And it's called the Ides of March. And uh, before we get into that, I just want to say thank you for uh, loaning me your children <laughs> and putting music in their heads and uh, burying them in puns. Yeah, it's what I do. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with them, and uh, we'll, we have a couple more things we have to do, like competition and graduation, but it's uh, been a real blast working with them. I hope you are enjoying the music as much as we've enjoyed playing it for you. Amen. And here we go with I to March.
and thank you again for coming to our midsummer, I mean spring concert. Uh, what month is it in here? I think it's August in here, right? Thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the concert as much as we did. Good night.